Hi, I'm Analytical, the sickeningly entertaining and educational coding drag queen. And today we are going to be coding the hit word guessing game Wordle. It has been sweeping the world and I figured what a great kind of thing to build, something we see in the world, a game that's become really popular, and see how easy it is to code a game like this on your own and add whatever kind of modifications you want. So if you have been buried under a rock and not seen Wordle, let's take a look at what it is. So you get a grid of words or a grid of letters that you can put in. So I would guess maybe the word the letter prime and spoiler alert, if you've not played today, it will give you green squares for the letters that are in the correct place. And then yellow lets me know that it is a correct letter, but not in the correct place. And you only get six guesses. So it's a fairly simple game mechanic wise. We need to be able to let people make guesses on the words, tell them if those words are correct or tell them which letters in those words are correct. And then if they eventually get it right, give them a win screen. So we're doing this in P5JS, which is a creative JavaScript programming library. I decided that it'd be great to start out with a class for the game, basically define all the functionality we're gonna need and see how it would all get structured together. And then we can fill in like the details later. Let's get started and define our class. Class game, constructor. What are the things that people do in Wordle? You can enter a word, you can enter a letter, you can delete a letter. I think these are kind of the basics that we're working with so far. Let's go about what other variables we'll need in the game. We'll need a list of words. We're just gonna put like a few drag words in there to start. Drags, queen. We'll just start with this for now. Then maybe when your game starts, you'll need to pick a word for that game. Let's call that the secret word. And we'll just pick a random word from the list of words. So to start our game, we need to create this game class. We'll say let game here and then in setup, create a new game. All right, we've got some extra drag words from the chat. So when you've made a new game, we'll have the secret word and then the person should want to guess. Perhaps we also want to like draw parts of the game. And I'm going to call some functions in the draw function that haven't been created yet. And then we'll go and define them later. Let's call that main box the game board. So draw the board. Then I'm gonna go sneak into my handy dandy helper code. When I run this, if I press any key, I'm getting the letters that I'm pressing and I'm also getting a number, which is like the ASCII code for that letter. If I press something like enter, it puts the whole word enter in there and back and delete or backspace, it gives me that. So you kind of have to be careful about what kinds of inputs you're getting. Here, I'm checking the keys. I'm seeing if it's length one to make sure it's not something like enter or backspace. And then I do a regular expression on this and I fully looked this up because I didn't want to think about regular expressions. I just check if it is a letter from A to Z, case insensitive. And then I figured we'll enter that letter and submit that. And I actually now I have to change this to enter letter since that's what I decided on earlier. And I actually do like game.submit instead of what did I say, enter word. Let's do submit because I don't need to submit the word. I already have the word. I already have the word stored. Always thinking ahead. Taking on a big game like this can be a little intimidating sometimes, but really you can think about it as just the like the word game part of it and then drawing the results. So you think about these two things, you don't have to like do them both at once. We can get the game part of it working and then figure out how we're going to display it. I'm going to need an array for my guesses, and this is going to be an array of arrays. So guesses equals an array. And then each time we submit, we'll add a new full guess to that list. Guesses should be the array of the submitted words. So maybe I also need to have like an array of the current guess, this.current guess. And when I submit, I will add the current guess to the guesses, if that current guess is the correct word length. So just to clarify, the guesses array is going to be the full guesses that have been submitted. And then the current guess will be an array with each individual letter in them. When we've add to our current guess, this dot current guess, we're going to push a new letter onto it. We do want to add some checks here to make sure that like this length is less than the secret word length. Otherwise you can't add a new letter. And then for delete letter, we can kind of do some similar logic. Length is greater than one, pop it right off. Let's focus a little bit more on submit. So we're going to need to do a few things here. This dot current guess equals this dot secret word. Let's just like print out that you won. A work, you win, yay. <laughs> And maybe we want to have like a this dot win function or something. That way maybe we can do some drawing or some like particles. That could be chic. We'll also need to reset the current guess. 
Eventually, we'll probably want to limit the number of guesses, but let's not deal with that right now. I want to see if we can play this. So I'm going to console out drawing the board, kind of see like where we are in terms of is this working at all. I'm just going to move these into the key pressed for now. That way we're not doing this every single game tick. We don't really need to redraw anything unless you submitted a letter, deleted a word or anything. So we probably don't even need the draw function. Console table is the console log that you have been missing. If you are trying to log out like a big array, console table will do it in a beautiful way. All right, I caught a bug already. I need to be doing things with the current guess. I need to merge all the letters into a single word and push that. I'm not, I'm not pushing like the individual letters. Let's go fix that. Instead of current guess, I need to current guess dot join. Also, instead of this dot current guess, let's do this guesses and like the last index of that. It's not length minus one. They really need to come up with a better way to get the last element from an array. It's like languages, come on. Like, why are we still doing dot length minus one? Like someone needs to fix that. Right? Am I right? I think I'm right. Okay, great. So this is my first value. Let's do prime. See, isn't this table so much better than doing console.log? Console.log is terrible for arrays. Console.table, console.table, console.table. Let's also just log out the current word just so we can see that while we're debugging. Because really the board is going to show the guesses and the current word. And I can't type any more letters than what I currently have, so that's good. I can press enter. Now Apple is in my array. Divas. I wonder what the word is. I, this is the thing, I don't know what the secret word is. I'm just gonna guess them all. Drags, queen, blush. I just wanted to give you the win. I'm, I'm hard coding this random word for now because I need to be able to guess it correctly. Okay, so it said I won, amazing. So our win condition also works. Okay, so like the game is working. I'm able to type the letters. It limits the number of letters I can type. I can delete characters, that works. I can guess and it will tell me if I've won. Now that's really all that Wordle is. So now we just have to display it. So displaying it is going to involve showing, drawing that board so we need to show the guesses, show which letters are correct in those guesses in terms of are they in the right place or are they just like the correct letter? And then we also need to show the current guess. Let's start on draw board. Guesses dot for each. This dot guesses dot for each. We're gonna do text G and I need to give it X. Let's set this to maybe like a, I'm gonna make some constants. Use dot X padding, five I padding, 10. We're gonna be using a monospaced font, that way everything can be aligned. Monospaced fonts are fonts where every single letter is the same exact width. This is really great when you're programming or using something like a terminal, command line, because everything will align based on the letter. I wanna draw at the X padding, this dot Y padding, and let's multiply this by I, so I'll also have to get I in my for each loop. But these are a little too high, so let's just, I think if I do I plus one, let's make them a little bit bigger and increase the padding definitely. Font size, like 35. Okay, this seems reasonable. Let's move these more to the center. So I didn't really think about this too clearly because we have to draw each individual letter because we need to check which ones are correct each time. I did array.from G so I could split the array of letters. We're kind of like pushing things into letters and then pushing them back. And so maybe not the most elegant way to do it, but like it works for me. We could refactor it later or never. I just wanna decrease this X padding a little bit and then I think we'll be good to go. Okay, so we're drawing every single letter, but I wanna go and see if I don't have to do this in the draw function just because I don't need to redraw this every single loop. Maybe I can recall like draw or every time I press the key. I just, it's like, I can tell my computer is heating up and that's not gonna be good. Okay, great. Our letters are showing up on screen. We're doing well. We got this, we got this, we really got this. We are we are honestly so, 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 so close to being in the clear. I wanna have another function that I can pass in, is letter correct. If the letter is correct, I'll return one. If it's in the wrong spot, I'll return zero. And if it's incorrect, I'll return negative one. So before I draw each letter, I'm gonna check if the letter is correct and then pick the fill color based on that. If C is one, let's set the fill to be green, else if, C is zero, fill to be yellow, otherwise black. So let's see if this works. 
Okay, drags was the correct word, but it did not color these correctly. <laughs> and you know why? It's because I didn't put anything in that function. And that's definitely a good way to make your code not work. Like, I know you can think, oh, like I, like my algorithm is so correct. The way I structured this object-oriented code, perfect. But if you don't, um, if you don't write the code, you're definitely gonna run into some bugs. If correct index equals a negative one, return negative one. Index equals the same index that I got, turn one, else return zero. Okay, so now it's giving us the correct colors. Drags, okay, amazing. So this is kind of, this is kind of giving it. We're kind of giving it. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> now I need to draw the current letters as I'm guessing them. I'm just gonna copy this part, but let's just throw the fill black on there before. Let's also just keep track of like the Y index so I can draw this one right after as I'm typing. My index plus plus. Okay, so I can kind of like type these in as I'm going through. So I can type queen, press enter, and then I can move on to the next word. So maybe it'd be good to like have an indicator showing like which word that you're on. And so we'll just do a point at the Y index. Point. And let's make it large enough so you can see it. Let's change the dimension of this board a little bit so it's like a little bit more sleek. Give it a nicer background color and then limit the number of guesses you can get to, I think it's six in the original game. So if when you submit, you are past the maximum number of guesses, then you're gonna have to see this dot lose. We also should keep a variable just to keep like, is the game running? Because if it's not running, then we don't want to like accept new guesses. We don't want deletions, all that stuff. So in win, this game running is false. In lose, this game running is false. So in delete and enter, we just need to return if the game isn't running. And then what should happen if you win the game? Maybe let's just put like, you win in like some nice text. It's like, let's keep it simple. We're new here. You win, let's put this at like 50 comma, like height divided by two. And then the same thing for lose, except it's gonna say you lose. Oh, you lose, oh, that's so sad. Drags. Okay, it said I win, but it didn't do anything with that. Let's make a new function called draw end state. So like if you won, let message equal you lose. And then if you win, the message is different. Let's just do like this dot one. Game running is true. This dot one equals false. This dot one equals true. This dot one equals true. Instead of this dot win. And then instead of this dot win, we're doing draw and say we don't need one. We're just gonna do is if this dot one. One is not a good variable name. I'm just gonna call this. I'm gonna need to call it again, but it's okay. And then I need to put this in draw, in draw, if. Game.game .game running, what a, not not great. Game not running. This should really be its own function that's like called is running. That would be nicer, but we're not de we're not thinking about that. We're thinking about getting this code working. Let's just type the first word, drags, didn't work. Okay, we're gonna, we're, we're the speed round. Draw end state is not defined. Draw end state is not defined. That's okay because it needs to be game.draw end state. In here, it's gonna to need to be this dot end state. I know I did, I know I messed it up. I know I messed it up. This dot, this dot. Bam, let's see how we do, drags. You! <laughs> maybe a little smaller, maybe a little smaller would be better. You win. Okay, and then what do I lose? What do I lose? What if I lose? I mean, I would never lose. I would never lose. <laughs> I lost. Oh. Now we're gonna play a real round of it so you can all like see see the game in action. I'm nervous. I'm nervous and I know the list of possible words. I'm just gonna guess like, when I do Wordle, I always guess the word like trail. Okay, so we've got a T and I and an L. Okay, I'm gonna guess nails. I have the I, the L and the S and the T. So there's S, T, I and L. I think it's split. I won. I won Wordle. And I created it. That's the real winning. And the best part about this is you can play it multiple times a day. All you have to do is re-hit the play button and you're good to go. I cannot believe we built the most popular game on the web right now with JavaScript and saw that it was so easy when we broke the problem down in the way that we did. This is just a great example of when you see some kind of cool code out there, it is great to just 
go and try it. See what kind of challenges you come up with because it'll give you so many new problems you can look at. I had to learn about things like pressing the keys and processing and figure out how to draw state without continuously looping. Tons of interesting problem solving that I will be able to take to my next coding challenge. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like, subscribe, you know the drill. Now, if you wanna go and code some of this, the code will be in the description. Go try it out. There are so many more modifications we can do from this state, but the world is your oyster. Go code, make it better, make it fabulous, and share it with the world. Thanks for watching.